All right, I got the second Roland switcher in. Uh, that's the switcher for the secondary loop. This is the switcher for the primary loop. Each one has a foot pedal and a finger switch that does the same thing as the pedal. So what is the purpose of the switcher? Well, it's to make an image go into feedback. So if I switch to feedback, it's doing that. That picture is coming from the phone and it's going to this monitor, which rotates, goes forwards and backwards in sync with the Nikon. And this Canon sees that monitor. The output of this Canon goes to the lower monitor there. But if you switch inputs on that second switcher, this monitor no longer gets the input from the phone it gets the input from this camera itself. So if I switch over, you can see that monitor just shows what this camera sees. And when you point the camera at the screen, you get that feedback loop. But the interesting thing is for that split second, right before it switches to seeing itself, it sees that image. And looking at it on the schematic, uh, Ladybird the dog comes from the phone and goes to the monitor here. The Canon sees it and it goes out to the lower monitor on the main loop. And it keeps doing that until the pedal is pressed and the input on the monitor here doesn't come from the phone, but comes from the camera. And then it goes like this. And that fraction of a second where Lady Bird was on that screen that the Canon saw before it switched over, that image is locked in there and it gets degraded as it goes, but basically that light is in there forever. And you can remove the phone and that image of Lady Bird would still be in there. And if it was all digital, if there was no air gap here, if it was all wires, Ladybird's image would be in there perfectly without any kind of input from anything forever. So the trick is using the control knobs for that monitor to get this into a balanced situation so that image kind of lasts for as long as possible. So here's the color. If you add a lot of color, see it goes into color. If you take all the color out, it stays black and white. I experimented with this switching between an image and feedback in college. Here I recorded my face on VHS and switched quickly between it and the camera looking at it with some success. Some weird stuff here. Okay, that's enough of that. If I'm zoomed out, each time I switch over, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. If I'm zoomed in by pushing this in, it gets bigger and bigger, or it rotates. Now I'm going to add some delay in that feedback loop by turning the processor on on this video converter. Right now the processor is off and it's really just converting HDMI to SDI. But when I turn it on, it's gonna convert from 1080p to 1080i, and that will take a moment to do, and it'll make that loop have some delay to it. If I change the inputs on the switcher on the main loop, it does something even cooler. So just like pressing this pedal changes the input of this monitor from the output of the phone to the output of the Canon there, making that phone image go into feedback. Pushing this pedal changes the input of this lower monitor here from the output of that feedback loop to the output of this Nikon, making a feedback loop there, which it sees through the reflection of this teleprompter glass. And just like over there, for a fraction of a second, it sees that ladybird image right before it goes into a fractal pattern. So you can see her face going into a little fractal there. So something even more interesting to do with the second switcher is use it as a keyer. So here are two red dots, hard to see over a blue screen. You can see here, dot and dot. If I change this to key mode, put it on the right source and the background. Now these two red dots are actually keyed over the feedback loop. And if I bring up the brightness a little bit, on that rotating monitor there. As I bring it up, they start to feedback. 
and it's going slow tick, 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 because of the processor being turned on on that video converter. So now when it's rotated like this, makes these interesting shapes, which become even more interesting when they're seen through the two monitors with the glass over here. And I was able to do this before, but now because I have two switchers, I can use the pedal to switch quickly between that loop and the Nikon feedback. And for just a second, just an instant, it sees this before it goes into the fractal pattern, making that image turn into a fractal. Beautiful, ain't it?